Hey, it's great to be here. Great to be at GBTA. How are you feeling? We're feeling good. Okay. So I want to talk to you today about how you can change the world, the world of business travel, how you can move forwards in new ways, and how you can harness the power of the technology, but also harness the power of your own imagination, of your colleagues, and those wonderful travelers around the world who we work with in order to do better for your organizations and companies. You know, in today's world, what it takes to win has changed. It's not just about technology, it's about thinking in a different way. So I want to talk about three things over the next 30 minutes. Firstly, it's about how do we seize the momentum, as we call it today, the momentum of a changing world for us to change too. If the world changes, how do we use that as a springboard to do more, to do better? Secondly, who are the game changers around the world in different industries? So be it in entertainment, or be it in telecoms, or banking, or fashion, what can we learn from other industries? Maybe there's lots of parallels and ideas which we can take from those places. And then thirdly, what is the future business travel manager? I'm not sure if he or she looks like that, but maybe there's an opportunity in there for you. But let me start with this. I think we live in the most incredible time. If you think about it, you know, look backwards through the last 250 years. Over that 250 years, from the steam engine which transformed our villages into nations where we could move to cities and we could transport across the, across the country, we got automated factories where we could mass produce things, the telephone, the telegraph, it connected us in real time. So we could do things in new ways. We could live faster lives, more connected. We can learn from new places. The airplane allowed us to connect across the world, but also connect cultures and ideas and import and export in new and different ways. And then we had this huge tsunami of digital revolution over the last 24 years to the point today where we cannot live without the mobile phone in our hands at all times. Inga. So the idea, <laughs> she's still on her phone. So the idea of all of that change and then more change in the next 10 years might seem ridiculous. But I think if you look at big data today, but artificial intelligence in particular going forwards, how would that allow us to be personal, predictive, and more prof profitable in the future? You know, I spend my life traveling around the world, probably like many of you. And when you look at some of the changes right now, you know, I was in Seattle um, over the last few weeks um, working with Microsoft. Every street I went down, I was almost knocked over by a Lime scooter. Have you seen these things? Yeah, I came to Madrid where I work in a business school. They were on the streets there. I walked in Berlin, they were on the streets here. Everywhere you go, there's now not just e-cars or e-bikes, as we talked about, but e-scooters. This was a company which only launched 11 months ago in Los Angeles. And the contagious idea, the speed at which it spreads across the world. Or think about last week, Alibaba's Singles Day. $30.8 billion spent in one day on the Alibaba platform. Compare that to Black Friday last week, then that was $3.8 billion, so almost 10 times as much. But they have different ways in which they work. More about that later. But the impact of these new platforms becomes exponential in how they can grow. And it's not Chinese. 58% of all the sales this year came from outside of China. Or think about eSports, the biggest mass participation sport in the world right now. It used to be me and you playing a computer game in our bedrooms against each other. Today, we're playing a computer game, but we have 10,000 people watching us. What is that? But if you think about it, the world of music's just the same. As, as we move towards a digital world with more and more downloads, which got cheaper and more accessible, then actually, the price of the rock concert went up. The most profitable company in the music industry is not EMI or Sony is the past. It's not even Spotify or iTunes. It's actually Live Nation. 
the physical rock concert company. So physical events in the digital world become more valuable, and it's how you link those two together. You know, think about Nintendo, they just launched their new gaming generation. Nintendo Labo is all about cardboard combined with the digital games. It's about people playing together. It's about people making things, being physical, being active, being human in a digital world. Or think about Glossier, the fastest growing beauty company in the world. It's about customers connecting with customers. So giving the power to the customers to share their passion, to co-create their own products and services, and then create events, pop-up stores, and engagements where the physical people can meet together. So digital and physical, how do they combine in this changing world? You know, if we think about this world, the speed of change, the momentum of the wave which we're riding is unbelievable. Just five years ago, the top five companies in the world were those. If you look at the market capitalization today, it's double in five years. But look at the companies, technology companies driving the way, in particular the rise of Tencent there, being particularly interesting, which has Google, Facebook, and um, uh, Amazon all in one company, if you like. Or look at the shift in terms of where growth comes from now. We all see the shift in travel towards Asia, but China dwarfing the growth of even America, and then India and others following behind. But look at the longer term shift, and we see that we're actually coming full circle from a world which was dominated by China, but particularly India. I find that one interesting. And we can see the start of that rebirth of those Asian superpowers in the world today again. But at the same time, we live now in, a, in, in an innovation-driven world. You know, look at the speed at which it took the telephone to penetrate the market to 100 million people, almost 90 years. It took the mobile phone nine years. It turned Pokemon Go 35 days. But think about how that starts to affect our behaviors and society. Look at where the growth is today in terms of the new disposable income, the growth of what we call the middle class in Asia, dwarfing everything else. If you want to launch a brand, if you want to engage new consumers, that's the biggest opportunity to do so. So where does the travel follow? Think about global warming at the same time, which we're partly responsible for. And you see a press report yesterday really shocking us into thinking we need to take more dramatic action than ever before. But at the same time, we see new infrastructures connecting the world in new ways. I was in Colombo just last month in Sri Lanka, a huge, massive port, bigger than the city itself, but dominated by the Chinese government investment. The same if you go to Ethiopia or even the UAE in terms of investing in this new road and sea infrastructure, which connects the new and new fundamental ways, but opportunity for China, but also for us in terms of going the other way. And then you look at longer term growth. You know, actually the three largest cities in the world by 2100 will not be Tokyo, which it is today, will not even be China, which are the fastest growing right now, but the three largest countries in the world will be King Shasha, Lagos, and Dar es Salaam within 80 years. So the huge longer term growth of Africa, we should be aware of too. But with all of that, we see a fundamental change in the way in which people, we, our travelers, our employees, we all behave, what we respect, what we do. The shift from institutions and hierarchies where we used to follow controls, we used to follow policies, we used to be compliant, and now we don't in the same way. We trust different people. We look to different influences than ever before. The power of the crowd over the power of what used to be called authority. The traditional boundaries which we used to live in recreated in a virtual uh, physical world. Confidentiality replaced by transparency. Or think about expertise replaced by a maker culture or people wanting to do themselves. We can do many more things. We can be experts in many more things, is what that's saying. And the old affiliations. For example, when I started in the airline industry, the power of the loyalty program then has fundamentally changed in terms of the affiliations which we have today towards each other or towards other types of brands and institutions. 
So we live in a very, very different world. And we have this incredible tool called technology to help us. But the real challenge for technology is not just to automate an existing process, not just to make something slightly cheaper or slightly faster, but do it the same way, essentially, but to rethink an industry, to rethink a whole behavior. It's how you take any of these technologies and how you apply them to the changing world. You know, in general terms, think about the aging population. How will we serve that when we have fewer people who are working? Think about those new middle-class consumers of China. How do we reach them where there isn't a retail infrastructure? Think about ownership to access. So how do we access driverless cars in the future when we don't have a loyalty to a brand because the cars are transient and they integrate with other forms of transport? So what is the new models and the business models, the commercial models by which we succeed? And through all of that, we see many, many different industries changing. We see healthcare particularly, I do a lot of work in that area, being transformed more than any other sector right now, fascinating. We see um, uh, vehicles transforming, we see financial services transforming, we see food being transformed. In Estonia, for example, we see democracy be transformed. With the bringing together, like Florian talked about, of man and machine, we see human being transformed in some ways. So how do we see travel being transformed in this world? Not just being automated, but actually thinking differently about how the whole game works, the game of travel. And the reason for saying that is because the future isn't like the future used to be. You know, I work with so many companies and they do their business planning. Every year, they try to grow a little bit compared to last year, maybe 10%, 12%, 7% but essentially they keep stretching the old model. And you ask them what they did last year, they stretched from the previous year. The previous year they stretched from the previous year. Any successful company is more likely to hang on to what made them successful. So they keep stretching the old models of success. We do the same things as human beings. We find a way of working and we keep stretching that old way of working. But in an unpredictable, in a dynamic, and a non-extrapolatable world, we have to think differently about how we win, but most importantly, how our businesses and our industry wins in the future. So that's why I turn to look at companies around the world who are changing their industries, and to really think about, well, what do they do? I wrote a book three years ago, and from that I run a series of competitions in every different continent every year, to find out who are the companies who are still, right now, changing their industries, changing their marketplaces, how consumers behave and how competition works. So here, in four minutes, are 100 companies. At the end of it, I'd like to ask you, which ones inspire you most? Which ones do you think are most interesting? So let's have a look at them. Okay, let's work and start in the world of retail. So, you ask Alexa and within two hours you can deliver it directly to your home in many cities. From the farm to your door in Australia, the leading retailer. ETD allows you to consume the food and cook it at the same time. And any artisan can walk across the world online. Glossier is about consumers coming together with consumers to share their passion. And Gojek in Indonesia takes anything to where you want it. The Museum of Guys Cream was biggest tourist attraction in New York this summer, and Pinterest lens, you snap it and you can buy it instantly. Rafa brings people together with a passion for cycling, you can buy the clothing too, and Trader Joe's is about your local community just having fun. In the world of products, then Apple is all about the ecosystem like iTunes, bringing beauty and food together in one company in Brazil, or anybody can take part ownership of a supercar with blockchain. GoPro transformed the world of photography and Lego. 65% of everything which you buy is an online community. It's about making your bathroom beautiful. It's about nature jumping from country to country. Nike is a sports company, not a sportswear company. Oculus Rift is about education and travel. It's not technology. And Renova, why is toilet paper white? It's a bad idea. In the world of banking, 
Black Rock said, we will only invest in companies which we do good as well as make a profit. Commonwealth Bank is about enabling you to do more. DBS Bank in Singapore is about uh, children, about making them fitter. And Fedor, Facebook likes to have interest rates here in Germany. First National sell more iPads than Apple. And M-Pesa, a Safaricom telecom company, became a bank. Square allows small shops to be big shops. And Umqua, learning from Gap and Starbucks, different industries. Zidishu is peer-to-peer -peer lending, plus expertise for farmers. And Zongang, the largest insurance company in the world, it launched two years ago. In health, $99 to profile your DNA to understand what you'll die from. And Aravin, connecting people with Skype operations in Africa. CVS turned from negative to positive with CVS Health rather than drugstore. And gene editing is the future of medicines. InfoVision about scanning your, 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 your body to understand what's really matter happening. And 92% of heart surgery is done by a robot today. Health Tourism funds free local healthcare in India, and any part of your body can be 3D printed today. Think about it. Patients trust patients more than they trust doctors, changing institutions, and connecting a camera to your brain so people who are blind can see for the first time. The school teacher from Shanghai became $470 billion richer, and SoftBank four times more successful than Intel. Dark Trace is the future of security online, and 10 times more than 10% is the mantra of Google. Nintendo Labo made with cardboard in the digital world, and VR becoming huge and dramatic in terms of how you engage. $35 to create any computer you want, and 100 million mobile phones sold in three months. Send your engineers to drama school, left brain to right brain, and Google, Amazon, and Facebook in one company. From Slovakia, we have the drive flying car for 1.2 million euros right now. Or Air Asia, the most profitable airline, it's entirely virtual. Airbnb, home out more hotel rooms to top five hotel chains from next door. And CTIP, transforming the world of Chinese tourism. Lime electric scooters we talked about. And 120, 250 miles, uh, kilometers per hour. Sometimes just about having fun or skybikes through the Ecuadorian jungles, or Uber moving from car rental through to uh, food delivery. But why do you own a car when you can get a cool one you want on in today's sharing world? 600 locations in Amsterdam to print out your 3D design, or farming becomes vertical the way it works. Brascom turns urban energy, urban waste into urban energy, and corning business to business is emotional too. 28 days to create your perfect car delivered to your home, and this is a $12 billion company. They haven't done anything yet. Doing space better than NASA, 10 times cheaper, and feeding the future world with genetically modified food. Frugal innovation, simple and cheaper from India, and Tesla faster than a Ferrari, and it's good for the world too. In the world of fashion, personalization is the new luxury, and Agrabidita brings scraps of material together to create something unique. Rihanna says everybody's different, so make the beauty too, and selling t-shirts in a cupcake store to be different. Don't buy it, but do buy it to save the world. And you see it on television, you can now buy instantly. The first super brand from China is Shanghai, and Stitch Fix sends you a box, you send back what you don't want every week. Threadless is about crowdsourced creativity with your consumers, and every time you buy from Tom's, you do good for the world. In the world of media, well, who do you trust? Well, AI-enabled um, child tells you what, who is the best news to look for. Making uh, our urban environment more interesting, and Dalian Wanda is the Walt Disney of China. Fans playing against fans, and Fortnite is the future of gaming done differently. Kahoot makes education exciting and Snapchat-like for children, and Live Nation, the most possible music business in the world. Algorithms entertain all of us for $9.99 a month, and Udacity, the future of education with nano degrees. Crowdsourcing African News, the largest news outlet in Africa. Finally, in food, any fine wine or champagne can be made in the laboratory today, or give the equity to your customers to do things differently. Grameen allowed Danone to be the most successful dairy in Asia, and healthy food, fast food, which is healthy for you. Hello Fresh in Germany is about sending you the meal ingredients plus the, ingre uh, the recipe, and this is the largest uh, coffee company in, in South America. The best beer in the world comes from New Zealand winery, and Nespresso, 8,000% more successful than the, pot, than the coffee machines. And finally, the Chinese gooseberry, which 35 years ago was reinvented as the kiwi fruit by Zespri. Each one of them changing the game in different ways. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so my question, my question is which one inspired you? 
toilet paper. OK, yeah, let's get down to basics. Yeah, why is toilet paper not colorful? I do not understand. Anybody can make toilet paper colorful. You can make your bath be bathroom beautiful. But nobody does it. So creativity is often incredibly simple. You know, look at those companies. You've got 100 companies there. Some of them are small, some of them are big, some of them are Asia, some of them are from Africa. It's not that they're all big businesses from America, as our textbooks used to tell us to look up to. You know, we can look at all sorts of companies today in every sing single sector. I think you could learn lots from them. You can read case studies of every one of them on my website, thegeniusworks.com. But think of a company like WhatsApp. How many people in the room use WhatsApp? Look at that, 97.8% of you. WhatsApp was created by Jan Kuhn, the Ukrainian refugee who went to New York City, wanted to phone his mum. He didn't have any money, he just found an incredibly simple program which you can use the existing platform to create a database messaging system. It wasn't about doing better, it wasn't about having lots of investment in VC funding. It was just about doing something really simple. It caught on, it became contagious like Lime Scooters. Three years later, Mark Zuckerberg went, walked along. He said, I need this company. He spent $19 billion on a three-year-old company, which made zero revenue. Think about that. But how many people worked in WhatsApp during those three years, creating $19 billion? 17. So it's not how big you are today. It's not how much money you have today. It's not even about having the most sophisticated technologies today. It's about how you think. How can you do things better? How can you change the way things work for people? So those companies, you know, if I pull out a few things which are special about them, and they have speed. We have a theme of momentum. So how do you harness the power of speed? Like some of those companies, Geo become the largest uh, mobile phone company in India. This year, they launched within three months and they got 100 million um, uh, consumers within that three month time. They gave it away free and they also became the largest advertising platform in the world. So they changed the business model, but they succeeded. Or think about network, the power of connectivity. Think about the networks we have, not just in terms of our companies or our agencies, but in terms of the network of travelers, the network of lo locations we cover, the network of partnerships, the network of participants here, which we have. How can you make networks work better? Think about intelligence, so the power of big data or artificial. Big data looks back, artificial intelligence looks forward predictively. So how can you harness this stuff in new and exciting ways? Think about collaboration, collaboration between people, between travelers, for example, between companies, between industries, between professionals. But think about how could we do more together than we each strive to do separately. And finally, think bigger. They're audacious, these companies. They dare to do something much bigger than ever before. And interestingly, given our panel just coming up, 54% of those companies are founded or run by a woman. We like that one. That was easy. <laughs> so, what is this business travel manager of the future? Well, you know, we look at many, many different reports and the Amadeuses and the Sabres and the Skifts of the world. They tell us all largely about how technology is changing our world. I read them, I understand them. If you look at some of the fastest growing companies, the startups who are shaking up our own industry, the world of business travel, well, who are they? You're probably familiar with some of these companies right now. So the disruptors of the business travel world. But how do we respond to that world? Well, I think firstly, it's about finding a higher purpose. You know, think about why are we here? What do we really do? And how can we make ourselves perhaps more important to the world and therefore more valuable to our companies and travelers? You know, thinking about, I think, a higher purpose, well, what does that mean? Does anybody have a Harley Davidson? Now, Harley Davidson, I worked with them two years ago. A Harley Davidson, oh, we'll come back to Harley Davidson in a moment, but this is, Ni <laughs> Sorry, this is Nike. You know, this is Mark Parker. I mentioned earlier, you know, Mark Parker is all about, um, at Nike, he says we're a sports company, not a sports wear company. And so working in Nike, it's all about thinking about sports, 
not just sportswear. So thinking in a different way. So finding a higher purpose like sports rather than just sportswear, you know, what people do rather than the product which you sell, then you know, how could we connect with the business agenda better? How could we reframe travel around what our businesses are actually trying to do, which typically you could classify not just as high performance and productivity, but growth. How can we be the agents of growth for business and the enabler to help people to work in new and different ways, particularly when they're global and they've got ecosystems and they want to reach new markets, not just through traveling, but actually being this multinational, multi-located organization. Secondly, think like a traveler. You know, how do we really think like that person who is traveling? Truly being consumer-centric, if you like. You know, Harley Davidson, they say it's not about the bike. It's actually been a 55-year-old bald accountant who loves to dress in black leather and loves to ride through small towns and scare the shit out of young children. It's the feeling. It's what the rider wants to do which matters. You know, they will make the choice. It's not necessarily the best bike they buy, but they want the brand because that they have that bigger feeling and being part of a community too. So thinking like a traveler is about not seeing the world like we see it from a managing the travel point of view, but thinking about what the traveler is trying to do. It's selling, or it's managing people, or it's forming new partnerships, or it's sourcing, doing things in different ways. So how can we connect travel with the priorities, the real priorities of which our travelers have? How can we make it easily personal, integrated, frictionless, as some people call it? How can we live, not just be live, but live on their smartphones, which is the center of their world? Go beyond the core is number three for the business travel manager. You know, really think about what is it which we could do beyond travel-related services and management. You know, Geek Squad was created by Robert Stevens. It's all about saying, you know, we can help people who work in a small business or work from home. He created a company called Home Support Services, Inc. Nobody called it that, they called him a geek. So he called himself Geek Squad, what the user called him. And then he de decided, let's make it more exciting, let's make it more fun. But if we're an emergency service to our customers, we have to be special. So whenever somebody phones up and says, I've got a problem with my computer, he jumps in his car, he puts his blue flashing light on, and he comes to your home and he says, Geek Squad, special agent, how can I help you? And he will do anything to solve your emergency because you need the presentation at nine o'clock the next morning. So not just thinking in the standard way about being an IT support service, but thinking about what really matters to the user. So going beyond the core, that might mean being able to think about connectivity and productivity, but beyond that, what else can you do? In particular, how do you facilitate new types of relationships and empathy between people? How do you help um, employees, travelers, to make better relationships? What are the better tools and services, not just to get there, but to do more when they get there? Not just to go out in the evening, but actually to do better business, to grow their businesses, or to form new relationships in new ways. Use carrots, not sticks. And I know one of the challenges for you is compliance of the corporate travel policy. But thinking about the carrots and how do we make the carrot work rather than the stick, you know, people are emotional people. So thinking about, you know, back to Alibaba. Whilst Amazon can deliver discounting every day to try and get you to come to the site, that's rather logical. What Alibaba did in Singles Day was actually to play games with its consumers, positive games. You had to find a black cat, and if you find a black cat, you'd win a discount. Because you'd won the discount, you wanted to spend the discount. You were more engaged. They had red envelopes. They were the big discounts. If you got one of those, you definitely wanted to spend it within that 24 hours. So how to emotionally engage people in much bigger and different ways? So look at Maslow's hierarchy. You know, most of the time, our compliance procedures are down the bottom. They're logical. But how could you make them more empathetic and emotional and aspirational? You know, as a traveler, I certainly feel that you know, 
business travelers sit inside the airplane looking at their trolley bags. Is it a tummy? Is it the latest model? Is it the headphones which you've got from Bose or whoever it might be? You know, these are the kinds of things which excite the business traveler and might actually get them to think differently about what they do and how they behave. And the final one, connect people with people. We can't control people in this world, but they're influenced in new ways. And for us, it's about finding how can we get people to connect and who are the influences of these traveling tribes. So think about like Rafa, which is that cycling company. Yes, they sell cycling gear, they sell bikes, but actually people come to their cycle clubs, not stores, because they want to share their passion. They want to share their passion for cycling. They want to watch the latest Tour de France. They want to talk about their latest exploits. They provide showers in the back room if you want to go for a bike ride together. It's about enabling the community. And then Rafa sells itself because people sell to each other. And so how can travelers be more influential in the right behaviors and supporting each other? You know, maybe it looks like, you know, in terms of when we start to connect travelers together. Maybe it looks like the TripAdvisor or Business Travel or the LinkedIn or Business Travel or whatever it might be. But how do you actually connect this community of people together so it becomes powerful and you become the facilitator of that powerful movement of people traveling around the world? So five thoughts incredibly quickly. What will you do? Well, you have three days to think about it. But technology is not the answer. Actually, I think it's more than technology. It's about being human. And actually, if you think about it, these things about thinking in a bigger way, connecting ideas together, being empathetic, think about new types of relationships, they're quite female characteristics. So thinking about how can we move travel up a bit? How can we see this bigger sense of purpose, this more engaging way of working so that we inspire people, not control people? So, be the business travel game changer. How can you apply some of those ideas from those 100 great companies to your organization? Or how could you be the person who reinvents the world of business travel? So I wish you a lot of luck. And three things. Be bold, be brave, and be brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs>